Welcome to lecture 10. After we discussed about the determination of permeability in the laboratory, where the size of the sample is very, very small. Usually we have a 4 inch diameter or 10 centimeter diameter tube and the height of the sample can be 10 to 15 centimeters. So please remember, it is a very small size compared to, this is about 10 centimeters dia and the height can be 10 to 15 centimeters. It is a very small sample, you have to get in the, from the field or you compact thinking it is the same as in the field. But actual projects usually are maybe something like 100 meters by 200 meters or if it is a dam, it can be even kilometer long, very long. So how do I find out what is the actual permeability at the site? Should I depend only on the small sample we collect or should we, should we determine permeability at the site? So we have several methods of field determination of permeability. Just to give you the reason why we need it is that suppose you are in charge of a huge multi-story construction and there is going to be a deep excavation. This could be 10 to 13 meter deep and if I look at the plan area of the excavation, it could be maybe something like 40 meters by maybe 80 meters. It is a huge office or residential block. The water table is somewhere here. So the contractor says or the designer that you have to bring it down the water table by pumping to less than the bottom of the excavation so that you can put the concrete here and start construction. Which means I had to put in wells to pump out the water. You had to put a highly submersible pump and pump the water away so that I bring the water level to at least one meter below the bottom of excavation so that I know that the excavation can be dry and you can put concrete on top. How do you estimate what should be the pump capacity? Should I use a fractional horsepower, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 horsepower or should I have 1.52 and even there how many should I have? I have to have a series of these pumping drain wells or whatever you call them all around the excavation and continuously pump so that the water is taken away from the excavation. That means look at the size you are talking. We are not talking in terms of not centimeters, but tens of meters. How can I design based on a small sample? So we better do, I would always recommend that you do an in-situ test or a field test to determine permeability. So let us look at now permeability testing in the field determination of advantages are two. If you are determining in the field, you can simulate the flow in the horizontal direction. Most of the time the flow is horizontal and then you will also get an average equivalent value. Suppose I am doing, this is the ground level, I take a sample here, 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 along the length over a distance of 40 meters. I may not get the same value of quotient of permeability because the soils in nature are highly variable. What if I do a test, I will get a average over the whole distance which is easy, more relevant and more rational for the design. And what are the two approaches we have? What they call as pumping tests. The second are called infiltration tests. Let us now look at pumping tests. You probably would study the same in hydrology, particularly groundwater hydrology, whereas this one is more near surface. We are now doing this for soaking pits, rainwater harvesting. You can find out how much is the rate of flow inside and lastly what we call as clay liners which are being used for municipal solid waste disposal sites. We call them MSW where we use clays and we would like to determine the permeability of the soil layer and this is fairly close to the ground level, so we can do the test. Let us look at the pumping test. Groundwater level is somewhere here. And I have a pervious strata 
and here let us say is hard rock which means permeability is 0 and even the layer here is a very low permeability soil. What is this called? You read that in hydrology as aquifer. Aquifer is a water bearing highly pervious stratum and it is bounded or confined by two impervious layers. So, we call this as a confined aquifer. The flow here is negligible, the flow at the bottom is also very low and negligible. Suppose now I put in a tube well and then I put a pump. I start pumping, before pumping the water level is here, but after pumping at a certain rate, you can lower the water level. This is the water level after pumping continuously, maybe for 2 hours, 4 hours or 8 hours and you will realize this water level is steady or constant. So, can I say this is H1 and if I go very far, let us say I am looking at maybe 100 meters away from here, the water level will be exactly what it was before. This is the at H or let me say instead of H1, I will call it as HW, height of water in the well and this is the extreme condition. So, what happens is the water level varies from the well to far away where you look at it. Let us say I take a small distance at a distance r, this is H1 and if I go at distance delta r, this is H2. I put in a small tube observational well at a distance r, height of water in the tube at r at a distance r is equal to H1 and height of water in a tube at a distance r plus delta r is equal to H2 because as you can see the flow is happening through the aquifer into the well. So, the head has to decrease from far away to in the direction to the well. So, the height here at a distance r is H1 and at a distance r plus delta r is H2 and you will agree that H2 will be greater than H1. Now, I would like you to write the simple Darcy's law for confined flow. It is very simple Q is equal to K i into A. Very simple coefficient of permeability, the gradient and the area of flow. So, I will write it as K. What should be the gradient? It is nothing but H2 minus H1 by delta R that is the distance travel H2 minus H1 that is delta H divided by delta R and what will be the area? If you look at this point here, the thickness of the stratum here is H. We said the previous stratum confined aquifer, the thickness is H. Please remember H is the thickness of the aquifer. Will there be any flow above the aquifer or below the aquifer? We know that because the permeabilities are very low, there will be no flow. So, the only flow that takes place is through the aquifer. So, the thickness is H. Can you tell me if the well is here? It is an axisymmetric problem in the sense the flow will take place radially. So, if the radius is R of the circle, what is the perimeter? 2 pi r into the thickness h. Please remember we are looking at a circular surface which means the perimeter is 2 pi r and the thickness is h. So, the cross sectional area of flow for the whole aquifer at a distance r from the center is 2 pi r times h that is equal to q. We will write it in a slightly simpler fashion. And if I now want to calculate Q, the total discharge, I need to multiply with dT. So, Q into delta T is Q at any time T is equal to K. Shall we write this as dH by dr into 2 pi r into H into dT over a given time T, all time interval, because the 
time may vary as a function. Now, if this is the condition, can we now simplify saying that you have k times dh by dr 2 pi r into h into dt. And if it is a steady state 1, it does not depend on t, so it is a constant value. So, I am not worried about the variable with respect to t and I will just say, can I bring this dr to the left and write this equation as dr by r is equal to k 2 pi h and dh. Let us integrate now r varies from the radius here of the well r w and this is far away. So, I will call it as a distance capital R where the head does not change. So, we will integrate this from R w to capital R dr by R is equal to k 2 pi h integral h near the well to the original water level that is h m into d h. It is a very simple integration you can do that dr by d is log base to the base e of r. So, we can now write that as this is log to the base e radius of the well to r this is equal to k 2 pi h integral of d h is h varying from h w to h l. So, that is nothing but log to the base c r by r w is equal to k times 2 pi h into h. So, now k is equal to simply log capital R by to the base c by well by 2 pi h into h l minus h w. You can also do that instead of going very, very far maybe 100 to 200 meters. What we sometimes do is simply put two observation wells or you take the water level in the well. This is the aquifer. So, I know h w at a distance r I know the water level h 1. So, instead of h l and h w I can have h 1 and h w and r 1 and r w. So, k is equal to and of course, you are going to measure the q it is a function of q. So, that is how you find it out k is q time and then you can convert this into log to the base 10. So, it becomes 2.3 q the rate of discharge log to the base 10 r 1 by r w divided by 2 pi h into h 1 minus h w. This is the expression. So, you are measuring the amount of water you are pumping, the rate of pumping q and from there you have measured the head in a well at a distance r 1 or capital R 1 and it is equal to h 1. You know the distance, I mean the height of water in the well which is at a distance of r w. So, this is how we determine the permeability from a confined aquifer. If it is an unconfined aquifer, the method is very simple, very similar. If I have unconfined aquifer, you have soil stratum, the ground water is somewhere here, there is no limit, the soil is extending from the bottom. So, when you are pumping, you find that water level may look something like this. So, this is h w and if I take any distance r from the center, the height is h and the water at this level is up to the this level, this is h. So, we again write the equation q is equal to k i a k i is nothing but d h by d r. When it comes to a, now you realize instead of the full aquifer, only the flow is taking place over a height h. The thickness of the aquifer can be high, but actual flow is taking place over the height h. So, we say 2 pi r into h. So, what you are now saying is the flow is through a cylinder. Please remember the flow is horizontal towards the 
center radially or if I am looking at in plant, it is all something like this. So, now you can easily integrate again. I can take q down there. So, dr by r is equal to k by q, q pi h dh. Now, we integrate again r, r w any distance and we integrate this from h1 to h2. You will get again similar expression log to the base e of r is equal to k by q into 2 pi integral of h is h square by 2 and limits are h1 to h2. What is h1? I can even say it is the height in the well hw, the height in the well. So, now this can be written as log to the base e r by r w is equal to k by q 2 pi h 2 square minus h w square by 2. And now, you can find k is equal to q log, I will convert into 10. So, I put 2.3 r by r w divided by 2 pi for oh, this 2 and 2 cancel. So, I simply will have pi into h 2 square minus h w square. All you have to do is measure the water level in the well and at any distance r you measure the water level h 2. This is called what you can call steady pumping test and the water level remains constant in the well. So, that is the q value for that what is it has to be constant for steady pumping and you know the q from the pump rating or measuring outside you can do that and you know the distance at which you are measuring the head and the head at this at that point is h 2 and the head in the well is h w. Okay. These are the two pumping tests we do if I have confined aquifer or if I have unconfined aquifer. Similar to that we have what they call as infiltration test. Here is the ground level. You make a small ditch or a trench or a small circular opening. You provide a impervious lining and allow water to flow down by this is a pipe. So, there is no flow. All I do is I will maintain a steady water level inside and find out how much water I need to add to make this level constant. So, this is infiltration test. Here you have varieties flow through the bottom of the excavation. So, in one case I simply allow the water to go down. In the second case, what we do is we excavate and provide a pipe only to a distance of you put in a perforated pipe and this is L1 and then you maintain water or you can even put a falling head test so that you measure the water levels at different times. So, as the water goes down, please remember in this case predominantly it will be lateral rather than bottom, particularly if L1 is large. So, we have several infiltration test models that we have, wherein you can find out either through flow through the bottom or flow sides and you can have a steady state or what you call falling head. So, basically what you need to do is make an excavation and make the sites impervious by pushing a tube itself. The tube diameter can be 150 millimeters, 300 millimeters, even half a meter. In the other case, we push the tube, but then we provide a perforated one, so that I can allow water laterally. And if this length is high, the chances are the water will flow more laterally than vertical. There are several formulae which is a bit difficult to derive in a classroom, but what I would like you to do would be to refer to the book and use the formula which I am going to present in the PowerPoint present. So, we will see how the 
permeability be, can be calculated from infiltration tests. 